Hey campers, Georgia, back in the South 40 man cave. Got me a project I wanna do. The other day I went to a friend of mine to get some fresh vegetables from her garden. She always lets me come around and pick them. Well, this time while I was there, I noticed something. Lying in the backyard, an ax, an old ax, a beat up ax, a rusty ax. Anywho, I said to her, huh, what are you doing with that axe? She said, well, it's been lying there for a while. My kids brought it from my dad's house. I said, can I play with it? She said, well, it's kind of old and beat up. And I said, well, I want to fix it. Let's make it nice again. And she said, have at it. So, let's check it out. So here we are. I have a look at it. The only thing I could really notice on it was this. It has a stamp in it. I don't know if you can see that there. And that is, it says Collins. So this obviously is a double bit Collins. Uh, not quite sure uh, when it was made. Uh, looked up the history of these guys and they're pretty well known and they do have a lot of them out there still today. Although if you ask people, they say not what they used to be. And some interesting history there. We'll get into that. But we need to fix this thing. Going to have to clean it up and make it all pretty again and see if it works. Of course, we're going to have to test it out. <laughs> so I went to the hardware store. I needed another handle. I measured this handle, 36 inches. Found this guy. Not ideal because they say if you find a piece of wood for a handle and it's colored like this, it's never a good thing. But looking at it, I think it's just been touched up to give it that look. So maybe we can get rid of that. I'm with everybody else. An axe handle should be plain. It's the right size and everything, I hope. And the only thing I haven't checked. Yeah, that kind of lines up. <laughs> Close enough for government work. Probably going to have to clean that up to get it in. It came with the wood wedge. But unfortunately, it didn't have any of the steel wedges that go in so I had to get that as well and of course you can't buy them on their own you got to get the wood wedge with it so we have the handle and this is a 36 inch uh, handle double bit axe genuine hickory made in the USA so hopefully this is going to work which means we're going to have to get rid of this handle and we have to clean up the axe so let's have at it
I got some water and me some coffee. Dark roast. Pretty good. 2CG cup. Interested? Let me know. I know people. <laughs> so while this uh, navel jelly does its stuff, let's talk about Collins. Let me tell you, they got some history. You know, I've seen, you, you go to the hardware store now and there's Collins axes and you name it. They all have Collins axes and they don't have the wood handles. They have that, uh, I don't know, fiberglass. I, I don't know what it's made. It's composite or something. And they're pretty popular, reasonably priced. And I started looking up about them and a lot of people said they're made in Mexico and they're okay. They're okay. They said for general mild use around the house, whatever, things like that. But if you're looking for a hard-working axe, those aren't the ones to get. And apparently, back in the day when they started, they were the guys. So there was this guy, Samuel Watkinson Collins. Way back when he was 24 years old, he started the Collins Axe Company. Decided to, to do a little bit more than what was out there. Apparently back in the day, it was really hard to get a decent ax. You had to go and find a, a blacksmith or somebody like that to make you one. If you couldn't find a blacksmith, you had to go to another town, whatever, search until you could find one. It was really bad. So he decided to fill that little problem. And what he decided to do was to start mass producing good quality axes. And that was in 1826, a long time ago. They'd been, they'd been around for a long time and they were very successful. At one point, I think they had like 350 employees, each guy producing like 10 axes or tools a day. Not just axes, they got into everything. Machetes, axes, hatchets, general outdoor tools. And were very successful and did very well. Then they had a little bit of an issue there was a flood and the factory got flooded, the railway that serviced them, their distribution and everything got destroyed. And then there was chainsaws. Yep, chainsaws came out and they really put a dent in their business. So eventually after about 150 years, I believe, they shut down, they shut their doors. They just couldn't compete. At that time, they already had different divisions all over the place. They sold them off. Their South, their South American division was actually bought by Stanley Tools. They did have a local one, obviously in the USA, which was their headquarters. This was around about 1960. They, they sold everything off, closed their doors, sold off their name and everything. And a company out of Mexico bought them and started uh, making Collins axes. And that's where everybody said the quality dropped off. How do you know when your ax was? <laughs> where did it come from? South America, was it made before 1960? Who's making it now? That sort of thing. And I try to look that up on here. And I, I'm pretty sure this is one from after 1960. Uh, according to what they say, the stamp rectangle, and I showed you that the rectangle just says Collins on it. That's typically one after 1960 and probably made in Mexico. The other ones, the older ones, they had, you know, all the different divisions had their own little stamp. And I believe the one you want to see before 1960 is the actual square one. And a little bit more information on the, the actual axe heads. So there you go. They've been around. And just like a lot of these companies, they all went through this heyday and then things happened and sold off, sold their name and that sort of thing. And now they're owned by bigger, um, more modern day companies that are mass producing them. And the quality obviously just doesn't match the good old days of hand, uh, handmade equipment. Let's have a look, see what uh, the Navy, Naval Jelly did for us here.
So while we wait that second coat to do its bit, I think I want to have a look at the handle. I looked up to see exactly what this axe is. I actually learned some stuff about axes. <laughs> Not much, but I'm dreading the end when I have to clean it up and sharpen it. I know Lacey Lace is going to laugh at me, but at that camp, the video, I just posted the video on that, this last video, uh, the winter symposium camp that I went to with Lee. That was a great time, by the way. I'll put a link up here. There's a guy about axes. He showed me how to do, uh, it's a grind, a pull grind, push grind, something like that, where you hold the puck or your stone and you're just going back and forth from the handle over the edge like that on both sides. And the one guy said to me, that'll give you a pretty good edge for just about anything you want to do. He said, the trick is, above anything else, is to strop. Ha! And we know how good I am at that. But, fortunately, at that camping trip, uh, Kurt Isaacson, the guy uh, with the axes, um, gave me a strop. Yeah, gave it to me. He had asked me for uh, a sticker for my channel, and I had a couple with me, so I gave him some. And uh, he gave me a bunch of his stickers and a strop. I'm going to use that and see how good I can do sharpening it. Back to the handle guy. 36 inches, about a 3 inch round here. Same shape, same everything. I think it's the same one. Uh, the thing that worries me is the color of the wood. Um, looking at the back here, you can't really see the grain. Mm, let me see. Uh, you can kind of, but it's got that coating on it, which has got to come off. You know, they put that uh, preserve on there so that during shipping and all that good stuff, it doesn't get messed up. So that's got to come off. That'll be the first thing I do. I'm going to sandpaper this thing down and see if I can get rid of the color. I'm going to clean this up so that it's ready when I'm done with the axe, hand, uh, the axe head and cleaned it up and got it where I want, I'm going to put in the axe handle. So we're going to deal with the axe handle first. Now I believe it's called a Timber Cruiser axe from Collins. They do say the perfect handle length for that type of uh, head, 36 inches. So we're doing good there so far. So looking at the head here, most of the rust is gone. And I think uh, I'm, I'm going to have to do some heavy sanding anyway to get down into the steel. Before I do that, I wanted to show you the edges here are nicked all the way along here. So I want to clean that up just all along the edges here and maybe even this area here and just get them a little bit more cleaner. Now I don't have a, a grinder, so I'm gonna have to do it by hand with um file. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So yeah, you can see it here now. I've done the rough cleaning up. All those rough edges along here 
I'm going to have to get some sandpaper on here and give it a good sandpapering to get everything nice and clean. deep into the night and now this morning I've learned three things one power tools are your friend two power tools are your friend three when you're old like me power tools are your friend So after uh, sanding it with the 80 grain, um, it's starting to clean up a little bit better. You've got to have some character in your blade. It's a lot cleaner now. Uh, the nicks on the edges are gone. Some of them were kind of sharp, so you see it there. Three forty or uh, two forty, and then three twenty, I think. And hopefully we can get a. A pretty good shine out of it. Well, like I said, power tools are my friend. I'm going to have to get permanent power to the uh, South 40 man cave if I want to do this again. Winter's coming. I can't do it outside. I'm going to have to do it in some sort of shelter. Maybe I'll just get a really long heavy duty extension cord for now. Way back when very good friend of mine on YouTube, Steve, sent me a little prize. It's actually a bench grinder. I haven't put it in because I don't have power. Yeah, there's another project. But, as you can see, it's looking a little better now. And I think in that 15 minutes of that thing, did more work than I did in, I don't know, four hours? If I want to do this again. And i got to tell you, I'm having a good time doing this. This is fun. It's a learning process for me. We've got to put this on the handle. And then fix this. We're going to have to reshape, sharpen, and strop. And then, whoop, dirt time. Chop us some wood.
Okay, getting late in the afternoon. I've been on this all day. Uh, about six hours of uh, filing <laughs> and trying to sharpen it. I cleaned it up as best as I can. It's looking a lot better. The edges of the hair were really badly uh, chipped and it was really rough. So I cleaned it up as best as I can. I'm no expert. All I was looking to do is to make it better than it was. I'm pretty pleased with what I came out with. Things as this is my first time. And I will tell you, it won't be my last. I learned so much doing this. So anyway, here it is here. You can see it. Um, a nice big hulker. So, yeah, you can, you can see it's uh, a lot better than it was. And you can see I uh, get it in the shade there. Uh, I mounted the head. That was an experience. I've never done anything like that. I think I got it right because uh, little curly pieces are all over where they should be, I assume. Did I do it right? <laughs> We're going to find out. And you can see the... See that? And the handle and all I did was boiled linseed oil after taking all the uh, nasty stuff off. Needs another coat, maybe another two coats. I'll coat it again and let it sit for a couple of days and then hit it again and then it's probably uh, will be ready to go home. Hopefully she'll like it. Let's go chop some wood with it. Wood? I don't really have any good wood. Uh, no big blocks or anything. The big blocks I have are my tables and my seating spots for the fireplace. <laughs> but I got some wood lying around here. Maybe we can chop some up and see what happens. <laughs> Oops. So there you are, campers. As you can see, none of my axe skills are great. <laughs> Never handled an axe that big, that heavy. Interesting. Also, the uh, the wood I had, it's not a good example. I thought I'd give it a try. First time for me, learn to light. Next time. I'll be more prepared. I learned to light. Hopefully, you did as well. So don't forget, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back again. Properly dressed. Had to keep it clean. It's getting dirty in the workshop. What's coming up next? Well, who knows? <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you again soon.